Our guest today is Natasha Romero, owner of Doggy Divine Spa and Grooming Salon in Venice, Florida. We're talking about beauty and health go hand in paw. Natasha, how important really is health in maintaining the beauty of our beloved pets? The pet will not feel good if it's not healthy and then the dog doesn't feel good. It will be not happy dog. Maybe the uh, even behavior of a dog will change. Uh, I think it's all connected. So it's very, very important. How did you get into this business? Probably since I was born. <laughs> yeah, I was born in a country that does, that does not exist anymore. It's Soviet Union. There was just a limited information about breeds, and I wanted the dog. Then finally, they got me a little poodle. There was no groomer, so at some point around 12, I had to give the dog a haircut myself. A manicure scissors. That's mm -hmm. what I used. Those scissors were like <laughs> was dangerous. This, this was a standard poodle. No, too. a little poodle. A little poodle. A toy poodle we okay. had. It would take me like two, three days. But this was the beginning. Then a friend of mine was really involved in the shows and she got me in there. We had one pair of scissors that somebody brought for us from Germany. That was like our di diamond. We had five <laughs> poodles, one pair of scissors, and we were using a regular normal hair dryer to blow dry them, which I don't know how we did it, but anyhow. <laughs> and this country opened right away the possibilities. You can go to the grooming schools, but I started as a bather. The wonderful shop in Schaumburg, Illinois. These people were really big time dog lovers and really good groomers, so they gave me a really good start. There's a good beginning. Mm -hmm. I now have a West Highland Terrier. Yes. Very cute one. Yeah. He's adorable. Mm -hmm. I cannot get him to sit down in the tub of water. Mm -hmm. And so he's from his knees up. He's not in the water. When we bait dogs, we don't put them like, see, here. here's the beginning of all the problem. You think it's a human. So when the human goes in the tub, there should be water. Mm -hmm. We humanize them and that's the beginning of all the little problems to one oh. another. So with the dogs, you don't have to put them up to his neck and make him lay down on his back, have some bubble bath and, you know, <laughs> champagne. No, it's uh, the easiest way is the shower. Uh, you know, you take the thing and you just go all over them. And uh, again, in the regular top is a little bit complicated because, of course, he wants to jump out. Or play with you. Mm -hmm. We have special uh, loops that are attached to the wall and that, you know, restricts dog of jumping. And they usually know if the loop is on their neck, mm -hmm. that's where they are and they don't go anywhere. So, yeah, you know. Uh, Mine's good. He doesn't jump out. Mm -hmm. um, but he does, if I get water in his ears, he does shake all over. Just use, use the shower head and it will help you a lot. Yeah. Well, I know. Your face is like, yeah, right. <laughs> Well, what I'm thinking is, I think I probably won't use the shower head. I'll probably get one of those attachments that mm -hmm. attaches to the faucet and it's on If a you have a shower head, I mean with the with the hose, those kinds, not oh, from the wall. I do in no. my shower. Yes, that the one that you can take off that, and then just go all over the dog. I didn't mean the one on the wall and just put <laughs> take, them under. Take no. a shower with your dog. <laughs> yeah. Some people, you were laughing, some people take the dog into the walk-in shower. And that's how they bathe them. Oh my. Yeah. That's some dogs really will go. close to your dog. <laughs> yeah. Some dogs will go with the owner to take a shower. So we heard those stories. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Well, I've only owned this dog for two, two months. Mm -hmm. So I am learning like crazy. Yeah. Especially with the terriers. They're very, you got to learn. And at the same time, you still have to be the human, the pack leader. Like. I am definitely the alpha person in this house. Beautiful. That's what you Bird need with Bird comes terriers. in second. Yeah. I have a cockatiel, and uh, she doesn't fly. So mm -hmm. I was really worried having a terrier Yeah. for fear. I mean, because a terrier is a hunting dog. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they're I'm, very curious. I was in the kitchen the other day, and, of course, I leave her cage open. She doesn't fly, but she will jump down. Mm -hmm. And uh, something was on my foot. I looked down, and there's my cockatiel <laughs> on my foot. And here's the dog, probably half a dog length behind her, just trailing, keeping an eye on her, curious, but not threatening in any way. And, oh my gosh, what a good dog I have. Yeah, just watch. Sometimes, you know, they're just not sure what it is at I first, know. but then they will get more comfortable. And that's where the playing yeah. Westie comes out. Yeah. And if he jumps, you know, yeah. there's a... 
smash. Yeah, I've noticed uh, it's happened a couple times. I mean, it happens before I catch it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, you know, in the beginning, I was very stern with him about mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would jump up and make her flutter and, you mm -hmm. know, and I would scold him and, so I think he's I think he's learning, but I don't think I'm ready to test him yet. I I think we told you when you brought him in to our salon the first time that he is a very good boy. He just needs to know these uh, you know uh, where he can go, what he can do. He needs direction, mm -hmm. and he will be perfect. Yeah, he has a very good nature. He is not in any way aggressive or like too alpha. He is a terrier. You can't take it out of him. And you don't want to take it out of him. That's mm -hmm. why we like him. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Um, his new trick is now, because he barks and barks and barks when he sees either another dog or a person, um, I have gotten so that I'll hold him close and then tell him to sit, push his fanny down, and then wait. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've done this now for, I don't know, maybe a week or more. Mm -hmm. And yesterday he did it by himself. Just make sure when you do it, don't tense the leash. The leash needs to be really... Oh, okay. Because when you hold it, you mm -hmm. create the tension. You want him to sit on his own with uh -huh. the relaxed leash. So yeah. it's kind of, you know, he's doing that on his own. Yeah. But he's doing it because you told him. Mm -hmm. okay, well, he was very good. I was so proud of him. <laughs> and the other two dog owners looked at their dogs and said... See, that's uh -huh. what you were supposed to do. <laughs> that made you really proud. That yeah. made me really proud. Um, so, the licking turns my Westie's paws brown. Mm -hmm. What's that all about? Uh, there's a couple of possibilities. And as a groomer, mm -hmm. first, I always say, it's a good idea to talk to your vet about it. Because, oh. you know, I can guess, I can tell you the possibilities that but when it comes to any medical issue or problem it's the best idea to speak with the vet first but in my personal experience and my groomer grooming experience I've been owning white dogs mm -hmm. my poodles my show poodles were white now I have Bichon and a standard white poodle uh, first of all we're in Florida the land of bugs and flying and crawling insects. Mm -hmm. So many dogs will be really allergic to that. You don't even know if it bit the dog or, you know. So this is number one. Pollen is number two, a big thing. So oh, pollen. Yeah, yeah, pollen, because it's allergen and it's in their oh. system. And another thing with the white dogs is very often the food. Even if you have a wonderful brand, all natural, uh, top of the line, sometimes mm -hmm. something doesn't work, okay? Hmm. So you can play with the food, see, you know, if that works with my dogs. We came to the conclusion and I uh, tried it with some other customers that had the same issue that venison uh -huh. works really good, especially venison and potato which is basically doesn't have any allergenic stuff in it and it works really well especially with the white dogs on their eyes or the muzzle you know where it gets red paw is more of a problem because they walk the grass yes, yes. i but, worry about the but the thing uh, with the food usually is really like they're 50 60 percent of the problem if you see just the feet is one thing, but if it's a face as well, yeah. then it could be the foot. I'm noticing on the chin, um, and I drive him crazy because I brush him all the time to keep him Very neat, good. but he's not a neat kind of dog. He's a man. He's a manly dog. <laughs> he is a manly he is dog. He's a boy, the hooligan type lady. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> he's a Westie for God's sake oh. <laughs> they're supposed to be like that he is a wonderful dog mm -hmm. you know before we get off the subject of bathing how often uh, should a dog be bathed well in a perfect world not in the perfect world in the normal life let's say we don't live in the perfect world uh, not more depends again on the lifestyle let's say if you took your dog to the beach of course you want to rinse the dog you don't need to use a shampoo each time but I would say once a month is a good oh. uh, number. 
<laughs> but you have white dog again okay so you might want to rinse his feet after he comes in the morning when it's wet, wet uh, outside this is it or again how active is the dog what is the lifestyle because mm -hmm. if that's a little dog that you know lives with someone who doesn't go really on the trails and it does not need that much but if it's a very like your case very very active dog mm -hmm. probably wants to know everything that's mm -hmm. outside every bush is his so once a month is good because if you do it more than once a month well maybe three weeks I would suggest oh, okay uh, it will dry their skin yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's, that's a whole nother concern yeah huh so once a month is a good number you can stretch it definitely with some dogs like I said depends on the lifestyle of that yeah. puppy it when I first got him um, I thought it would help avoid the licking mm -hmm. if I bathed his feet mm -hmm. every time I took him out because mm -hmm. I'm thinking insecticides and things in the grass um, but you know I really don't see a difference mm -hmm. he still licks and um, then you need always remember as well that white dogs number one Westies are very very allergic dogs uh, a skin problem with this breed is very very common and the more purebred they are the more problems you'll see oh yeah but Westies cockers uh, these kind of dogs with the really thick skin uh, coat mm -hmm. are very very prone to the the skin problems ear infections not on the Westies but on the Cockers and this the paw is mm -hmm. the the number one kind of the beginning of the problem that you will see because the toes are close together and the moisture is in there and it collects the dirt and you know oh. so oh I hadn't even thought about that mm -hmm. yeah okay so this being a new dog mm -hmm. and you know I've had him groomed from head to toe once mm -hmm. um, how often should I be doing that uh, again I'd say perfect world this time is four weeks if we're talking about the dog with the haircut and then again it, it doesn't have to be a haircut each time but it's a bath we clean them mm -hmm. we take care of their nails we clean their ears some dogs needs to this magic world anal glands mm -hmm. ex expressed uh, and we can just trim them you know shape it up it doesn't have to be each time every four weeks the haircut but normally it's about six weeks okay. six to eight you can stretch with the white dogs eight will be really visible so six weeks is a really really good number for the grooming okay. uh, gaps yeah yeah you know and there are things that parents humans mm -hmm. owners pet parents don't do mm -hmm. that um, that is done with a groomer like getting into their ears it would never occur to me to do that mm -hmm. I had one lady she said we pluck your hair on really all the dogs that have ear hair some dogs don't have you should it. do that with husbands yeah well oh god older, husbands you older. can go into other places <laughs> and will still not change them so uh, she said do not pluck the ear hair from my dog and I said why she said it's inhumane I said but you know it gonna get the airflow into the ear canal and it's gonna keep dry Mm -hmm. without because when there's a uh, ear hair all this gunk and yucky stuff stays in there Collects, and it creates a big problem mm -hmm. and she said no 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 it's inhumane I don't want you to do it and I asked her may I ask you how did you uh, fix your eyebrows she looks at me and she understood where I'm going <laughs> she's like and I said was that humane <laughs> she looked at me and she said okay do it <laughs> So you know, we humanize them. That's a, right. Uh, that's a it's a good thing, but to the certain limit. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we plug the ear hair. We use a special powder. It's like a baby powder almost, mm -hmm. but you can buy it at any pet store. It's called or in our salon, it's called ear powder, mm -hmm. which basically uh, helps you to get a better grip. Oh. Okay. And then it comes out pretty much easy. On some dogs, it is a problem one out of ten but normally it comes out pretty easy hmm. so and then you use the ear cleaner on the top of it oh okay 
I think I'm just going to leave that part up to you. <clears throat> Sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell our listeners who are maybe wanting a dog, mm-hmm. how... How should you go about getting a dog? You can go to a breeder, you can go to a rescue, you can find one in a pound, you can have a friend give you one. I, what do you think? You know, I started with the very, very high uh, level show dogs myself. But today I am more into the adoption. And I'll tell you why uh, both of my dogs were adopted. They were not from the shelter, they were from the people I knew. And they're wonderful dogs. Right now, we started working with the Sarasota County Sheriff's Animal Services uh, Shelter. You will not believe what kind of dogs they have. You want a purebred dog? It might take you a longer time to find, but uh, you will find absolutely wonderful. Um, lo- the dogs are s- as sweet as you can imagine mm-hmm. and these dogs will be yours best friend protector whatever you want forever and ever and at this point there's so many dogs on the street we just had the gentleman walking and asking if his dog needs a grooming just adopted the dog was found on the street the cutest thing ever okay so yes there are breeders mm-hmm. if you're ready to do it uh there are shelters there are, you know whatever rescue groups but I would today suggest that you better check a local shelter before you do anything else shelters on the other hand another aspect of our life financially Mm -hmm. it's not gonna cost you much and you're gonna basically rescue your life Uh, rescue groups sometimes sometimes not all of them some of them will charge you lots of money Mm -hmm. but shelters do have real cases of dogs that really need the house we try to help this particular shelter and uh, one of their volunteers our wonderful customer brought the dog to us for a day Mm -hmm. we had four visits three of them ended out being adopted one was adopted right up out of our shop. Second was adopted from our customer in two days. Mm-hmm. And the third, because of our referral, got adopted. And every time they come in, we, we're just speechless because we would not imagine that this dog was in the shelter for a month or two. Oh, yeah. They're so sweet, loving, you know. So I would uh, say go and adopt before you go to the, you know, a breeder. Okay, now you're you're talking about um, a shelter in Sarasota. Yes, on Bee Ridge. On Bee Ridge. Okay. It's uh, the sheriff's department. Uh, now is that the same as the Humane Society? I don't think so. Humane Society, I think, has a different one. Okay. If you are interested, you can go on our Facebook page. We have lots of uh, you know the share pages from them. Right. Or, mm-hmm. And that the website and, is www doggy divine salon dot com yes or facebook page and not to forget just to mention the amount of cats that they have and those cats are so sweet and really really nice kitties they have a really big amount of cats that need homes too I was surprised to find out that there is such a thing as a Westie rescue. Oh, yeah, any breed. I said, oh, my gosh, Mm -hmm. who would ever give up their Westie? And I'll tell you why, because, like, you ask me, where do you go? Before Mm -hmm. you go anywhere, you do your research. Mm -hmm. Because many people, oh, look, it's a cute dog, let's get it. And they don't know what kind of dog. It's a very energetic, if we're talking about Westies again, Mm -hmm. very energetic dog. The family with a very quiet lifestyle cannot get this kind of dog because you will not be happy and that's how they end up in the rescues that mm-hmm. people sometimes just don't want to deal with it they will drop them there and that's it when my children were little we were always finding dogs mm-hmm. um one fellow was was riding his bicycle by and i saw him carrying this puppy and the next thing you know i heard the little puppy yip mm-hmm. and the guy's down on his hands and knees <laughs> looking under the car he said, I was on my way to take him to the dog pound, mm-hmm. and I dropped him. Uh, he said, well, my mom won't let me keep him. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, you know what? I'll keep him. Mm-hmm. 
people would say, look at their paws. You can tell if they're going to be a big dog or a little dog. Mm -hmm. I could never tell. Mm -mm. This dog grew to be a small horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a big bunch of love. <laughs> so when I decided I wanted a dog, I knew I wanted a West Highland Terrier. Mm -hmm. um, but I also knew time wasn't right. At first I was in college, and then I was trying to start up my business. Finally, when I was ready, it, it took a year. Yeah, and that's a, like what you described is perfect because, again, we're very compulsive when it comes, ah, beautiful puppy, let's get it. But like you said, if you're going to college, if you know that you're going to have family here and you're not going to have enough time for the puppy, just think about it. It's like a child, you know. If at one point I had a German Shepherd that had really, really big problems with the health and... Uh, and it was not health health, it was mental health. And oh. I was, what am I going to do? I thought maybe we'll give him to the police, you know. And a friend of mine said to me, how can you do that? If you would have a bad child, bad behavior child, would you even think of giving him to someone? So, you know, this is a good thinking. Of course, there are cases when dogs are extremely aggressive. You know, those are very special cases. Mm -hmm. But when you get the dog, you need to think of it as a child, as a human. I don't want to say human, but right. person. It's not a thing. It's a dog. It's your best friend. And they love you no matter what you are. Yeah. For this, I think we need to also be very responsible when we get one. I think so too. I mean, any living thing, you know, you have, you don't want to humanize them, mm -hmm. but it's hard for us not to because we empathize. To the certain level is okay, but when it comes to the things when they need to listen, boundaries should be there, mm -hmm. you know. When uh, people feed them on the table from the plate, that's, oh. that's above, you know, but some people do that and then dogs try go further did I go further my Bichon that I have the lady was a wonderful lady older lady her family gave her that little Bichon which is a wonderful breed they're sweet she humanized him to the point that he took over the house mm -hmm. she couldn't sleep on her bed because he was laying on it <laughs> so he got to my house and all of a sudden we got the rules new rules <laughs> she called me day three so how is he doing I said he's fine he's laying on his bed the silence was for about a minute and I said Gail she says how did you manage to put him on his bed I said I told him this is your bed <laughs> he tried to jump on my bed <laughs> you know, and he was sleeping there since day one so they know they're smart and they will try to push the limits mm -hmm. but this is your job as again as a parent you know with kids we love our kids but we have rules for them set nothing different with dogs that's interesting you bring that up because I don't know if you notice the little chaise lounge mm -hmm. in the TV room but that's his bed Okay. And well, I bought it because I don't want him on my bed. <laughs> uh -huh. But he always sleeps in the crate, mm -hmm. you know. And he's so smart. Oh, my mm -hmm. gosh. I'll say, oh, my gosh, it's getting late. We probably better go to bed. Mm -hmm. And he'll run into the crate mm -hmm. because he knows I'm going to go get a biscuit and break it in half and give it to him. Well, simple. I only have to say the word now. Mm -mm. Um, yeah, and they if you have these rules set, and I'm not talking about, you know, army rules. Right. Get up seven, go to bed, nine, right. no. But they need rules and then they're happier. Yeah. If they have the rules, they follow the rules. Dog is there to serve you, basically. Mm -hmm. So they need a job, like Cesar Milan says. If your dog doesn't have a job it starts going crazy and that's where they start looking for trouble chewing running away maybe peeing they need something to do so if they have rules this is kind of their job to follow the rules mm -hmm. so going to bed let's go and then there's a biscuit what can be better you know yeah. if you got the reward for your job done well so i'm trying to get him to use that i mean he's seen it and in the beginning i would sit down and say come on mm -hmm. and then i'd sit with him um, but I want him to know that it is his. Mm -hmm. And so usually he, when he goes he on there, I give him some kind of a mm -hmm. something that will take him a while to chew on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, about the adopt thing, mm -hmm. I just wanted to add one thing before we run out of time because th this is a huge subject. We can talk till tomorrow with you. Uh, we're going to have adoption event. We're working with the Sarasota County Again Shelter, and we're going to have it on December 8th. It will be on our in our shop and that little parking lot in front. 
you can come meet the dogs talk to the people from the shelter they will there's a couple of programs how you can adopt the dog uh -huh. you can adopt the dog then another program they have foster to adopt so you can take the dog to your house see if it works out for your house for your family members for other animals or you can just foster the dog you don't keep the dog but for them it's pretty dramatic experience to live in the, in the shelter on November 30th in, in Venice December 8th so Sunday December 8th but I'm thinking it's 11 o'clock okay so we, we will say 11 to to probably do about that address is 241 the Miami Trail South on a beautiful Venice Island the phone number is 941-451-8116 you mentioned our website doggydivinesalon.com also our Facebook okay 